Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Scott K. If you recall a recent video that I have done on the KBD67 Lite, I have deemed this keyboard as one of the best entry options you can get. It delivers great typing feel and experience, amazing sound, and does it all for about $109. For my own, I have updated it with an FR4 plate and added in some silicone as dampening to improve the sound even more. For a while, I thought, yep, I'm done with my KBD67 Lite. There isn't much you can do to this board to make it even better. Until this showed up. The KBD67 V3. The KBD67 V3 is essentially an optional upgrade to the existing KBD67 Lite, but replacing the ABS plastic case with a nice anodized aluminum one with a brass insert. This entire upgrade costs about an additional $160, which actually costs more than the entire KBD67 Lite kit. Combined, the entire kit will then cost about $269, so not so entry anymore. So, is it worth shelling out all that money to get an aluminum case and a brass weight? Does a case upgrade take the KBD67 Lite from an entry keyboard into a mid-level territory? Let's find out. But before we start, let's do a quick typing test on the KBD67 Lite to set a reference point. For the switches, we'll be using the Gateron Cap Yellow V2s. You're probably thinking, Scott, of all the switches, why cap switches? Don't they suck? The V1s weren't that great, but the V2s have much improved, smoother, greater sound for great value. So talk about a glow up. Overall, the KBD67 Lite is already a great keyboard. It types very well and delivers a very nice clacky typing sound depending on your favorite switch. So let's take a look at the KBD67 V3 aluminum case. At a glance, the KBD67 V3 looks like the old KBD67 Mark II. However, that keyboard was a top mount and the V3 shares the same gasket mounted structure as the KBD67 Lite. The brass weight drops in on the inside and it's nicely coated finish and adds quite the heft to the overall keyboard. The KBD67 V3 is not a kit in itself, but rather an upgrade to the existing KBD67 Lite, so you need to remove the internals from that and drop it into this. The V3 case is a nicely anodized finish and overall helps the KBD67 feel much more premium and substantial in your hands and as you type. However, it does increase the stiffness and there is a seam that runs along the upper and lower case which is similar to the KBD67 Mark II and the light. So what does this thing sound like? Let's take a look. The V3 case definitely changes the sound. The overall pitch does go slightly higher, but more than that, it just changes the type of sound. Metal cases makes a different type of sound versus plastic and is very evident here. Also as noted before, the keyboard also does feel stiffer. At this point, I could have called it a day, but you know I can't really leave things be, so I had to do something with it. I PE foam modded it. Initially, I tried the tape mod, but there really is no space below the PCB with the case foam installed, so tape mod really didn't fit and didn't do much. But the PE foam, the PE foam really did wonders to this board. But before we jump to the final sound test, I found a cool new gadget that I'm excited about and wanted to share that with you. 
Normally when you have to open switches, you can use a tweezer or a standard switch opener like this one from KBD Fans. You typically take a switch and then you line it up inside it and then you press down to separate the uh, top and the bottom part. Then the part I really hate. I use my fingers to pry them open. Some of you guys have commented, yo Scott, why is your finger so jacked up? When you have to do this like a thousand times, yeah, it sucks. Then I found this crazy contraption from Gateron. At first I was like 30 bucks for this hippo tooth puller, what the hell? And then I realized that I paid 25 bucks for the small KBD fans one also. And this one doesn't require me to pry things open with my fingernails, so I think that's a win. So basically you just take this thing like this, you take a switch and then you lay it into its jaws. Then you just clamp down and it pops the whole entire thing open. So, no, it won't crush your switches. There's a little stop that prevents that. I'll leave a link in the description for this, so check it out, especially if you have jacked up fingers. So what's the verdict? If you have a KBD67 Lite, should you splurge for the V3 upgrade? It depends. If I was going to go to V3 and leave things stock, I probably would just stick with the KBD67 Lite. It's just so good for that price and with a new plate, it punches way above its weight. Types great, sounds great. However, if you're willing to do the V3 mod combined with something like the PE foam, dare I say it, you won't be getting a Vega out of this or anything like that, but you'll definitely be getting one step closer to the end game board sound. As usual, if you like the content, please like and subscribe and check out my Discord. Thanks.